This question appeared on a video about using Google Chrome with Excel VBA. And what this viewer wanted to know was how to get unknown words from one of the translators. So for example, how to translate English to German. To do that, we're going to take a quick look at the basics of using Google Translate. So while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly copy the URL to the clipboard. And then we'll write the basic code to navigate to that in a fresh instance of Chrome. So I've already started by creating a new workbook, saved it as a macro enable file. And then in the Visual Basic Editor, I've inserted a new module. If we're using Google Chrome, as usual, we'll use the Selenium Basic Library. So to set a reference to that, we can head to the Tools menu and choose References. And then in the list, look for Selenium Type Library. Place a check in the box and then click OK. And then we'll declare a variable, which can hold a reference to an instance of a Chrome driver. So I'll say private CD as selenium.chromedriver. Then we'll create a subroutine, what should we call that? Translating, something like that. And then we can set our CD variable to be equal to a new instance of the Selenium Chrome driver class. We'll start the Chrome driver, and then we can get the URL that I've just copied to the clipboard, so cd.get, and then paste in that URL in a set of double quotes, which I nearly forgot. So let's just open and close the double quotes there. And there's the very basic code we need to navigate to Google Translate. One quick problem we'll need to solve before we can get to the translating part is how to accept the cookies agreement that appears when we run the subroutine. So I run this code, because we're using Chrome anonymously, we get presented with this form that asks us to consent to storing cookies. And I have to click the I agree button to make that work. Now I want that to happen automatically, and there's a couple of ways we could get around that. So one way would be to not use Google Chrome anonymously. We could start Chrome using a user profile. And if you're interested in how to do that, we do have a video which explains how to start Chrome using a user profile. So I'd recommend having a quick watch of that video as an alternative solution. For this video, I'm just going to write some code that's going to click the second of the two buttons that appears on the cookies consent form. So what we're going to do is say cd.findElementsBy CSS. And then we're going to search for buttons. So we'll look for elements with the button tag name. And then I'm going to refer to the second button in the collection that's been returned, and then apply the click method to that. So if I run the subroutine again, we'll see the consent message appears, but I click on the second button and then land on the translate page. Next, we need to find out how to reference this element on the page so that we can enter some text to be translated. So I'm just going to maximize the window that I've opened up here and then right click on that element and choose to inspect it. I think I'll need to do that again as well. Let's right click and inspect so that in the elements panel, we end up in the correct place. So we can hopefully see there we've referenced something called a text area element. Now I'm pretty sure there's only one of those elements on the page, but just to make absolutely certain, I'm going to copy the text area tag name to the clipboard, head back to the visual basic editor, and then write a debug.print statement that's going to use the find elements by CSS method. So I'm going to try to find all the, uh, all the uh, text area elements using the tag name that I've just copied. And then I want to print out a count of those to check there's not more than one. So if I run that subroutine again, we'll go through the cookie consent message again, and then hopefully we'll find that there is indeed only one of those items. Okay, so having established that, we can alter this line now. Let's not try to find all the elements by CSS. We'll just find the single text area element using find element by CSS. And then I don't want to count those. I know there's only one of them. I want to apply the send keys method to that element. So this allows us to type some text into the box, of course. Now we can just type in some literal text. Um, you may have noticed when we first run this, in, in my case, the default translation language or, or, or output language is English. So I want to type in something that definitely isn't in English, just to make sure this is actually working. So in some double quotes, I could I could write the phrase for thank you in a different language. So I'm going to say Asanta Sana, and apologies for any mispronunciation of that. So let's run that subroutine again. And hopefully this time we'll see that we end up with some text typed in and it detects that that is indeed in Swahili and it translates it for us as well. Now, rather than typing in the text each time, what we could also do is reference a cell in a worksheet. So I'm just going to copy the phrase that I've typed in there and I'm going to paste it into cell A1 on this single worksheet that's in my workbook. 
and then I'm going to replace this piece of literal text with a reference to range A1 and then we can reference either the value or the text property of that range. So once again, if we run the subroutine, we'll find that it will read the contents of the cell, type that into the text box on the website, and then show us the translation as well. The next step is to work out how to extract the translated text so that we can send that back into Excel to make use of it. Now we could take the approach of attempting to work out how to identify this element and then extract the text from it, or we could take a shortcut and just work out how to click on the copy translation button, which is what I'm going to do. So let's just maximize the Google Translate window again, and I'm going to right click on the copy translation button and choose inspect. And again, I might need to just do that a second time just to get to the correct place. I think I might have gone just a level too low here. I think I'm just going to scroll upwards in the elements list to find the button element here. So I know this, this item is a button. It looks like there are several other buttons on this page though as well. So it's quite likely there's multiple buttons here. I don't want to um, have to work out which numbered element this copy translation button is. So I'm going to try to find a button that's got some kind of unique property or attribute. And I think a fairly useful one to use, a, a descriptive one at least, is this property or attribute called aria label which has the value of copy translation. So I'm just going to double click on ARIA label and then just extend my selection to get all of that copy translation and the open and close double quotes. And I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard for the moment. Then I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm going to say cd.findElement by CSS and then in some round brackets and double quotes, look at how to refer to a specific tagged element, a specific type of element with a particular value for one of its attributes. So now I'm searching for a button and then in some square brackets, I'm going to paste in the code I've just copied. Then I can close the double quotes at the end there and close the round brackets and then I can apply the click method to that. Now one small problem with this is that the nested double quotes here will break this line. It makes the syntax invalid. So the simplest solution here, rather than using double quotes for the attribute value, copy translation, we can exchange the double quotes with single quotes. Now, one other quick thing I'm going to add in just for a bit of safety. You may have noticed when we executed this code the first time, there was a bit of a delay, a bit of a pause between typing in the text into this box and the translation appearing here. So I'm just going to introduce a short wait between entering the text and then attempting to copy it. So I'm going to say cd.wait, I'll attempt to spell that correctly. I'm going to wait for two seconds, probably a little longer than I really need to, but just for safety. So having copied this to the clipboard, I'll then finally want to write it out somewhere, paste it somewhere. So I'm going to say range A2 and then just paste the contents of the clipboard to that cell. So we'll say paste special. OK, so having done all that, let's run the subroutine again and we will hopefully see that we end up with the same phrase translated. We'll hopefully see the button being clicked, copy translation, translation copied. So if we head back to Excel, we should then see that translation pasted into cell A2. So far, we've accepted the default languages that Google Translate has used. So we can see that the input language is being detected automatically, Swahili in this case, and the output language is set to English. But what if we wanted to change either or both of those? Well, again, we could take the approach of attempting to work out how to reference these button elements and click on the drop down lists there and then click a different language in the list. We can do that for both the source and the destination language. But there's actually an easier way to do it. You might have noticed when we translate some text in Google Translate, the URL changes compared to the one we first navigated to. This little question mark here indicates we've added a query string to the URL. We've got a couple of parameters there. SL, which I'm assuming stands for source language, is set to auto. And then the second parameter is TL, I guess translated or translation language, and that's set to EN. So watch what happens if we change the translated language. Let's just quickly click on Spanish, for example. You can see that TL changes to ES. So if we know which, uh, which code to use for the language we're interested in, let's look for German, that's set to DE, we could actually add this uh, query string to our URL. 
So I'm just going to quickly copy just the first two parameters from the query string. So I'll need a forward slash uh, question mark SL equals auto and TL equals DE. So let's copy that to the clipboard and then head back to the Visual Basic editor. And then at the end of our current URL, I actually didn't need that extra forward slash after all, but I can add that query string to my URL. So having done that, if I now simply run the subroutine again, we'll see that we land on the same page, but this time we've automatically set the translation language to German. So the output now, if I have a look back at the Excel worksheet, is the output in German rather than in English. If you wanted to test out any others, then you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to go for JA for Japanese. And then let's just change the destination cell there to range A3. And if I run that one again, we'll hopefully see that the translation comes out in Japanese. And we've copied that to the clipboard and then pasted that into cell A3 of the worksheet. The query string also provides us with an alternative way to set the text that we're translating. So if we have a look back at the Google Translate page we've opened and look at the query string, we can see that the third parameter is called text and that contains the text that we're translating. So rather than using the send keys method, if we switch back to the Visual Basic editor, we could either delete or comment that line out. We could simply add on the third query string parameter. So let's add the text parameter to that and make that equal to and then we can simply reference either the text or the value of range A1. So we could concatenate that into the, the URL. Okay, so having done that, we could just run the subroutine again. Maybe we should just reassure ourselves that this is working by changing the output cell. Let's go for cell A4 this time. And if we run the subroutine again, we'll see we get the same end results but this time generated using the query string parameter rather than by using the send keys method. So we'll end up with the same output sitting in cell A4 this time. Just a quick note that if you're using the query string to set the text you're translating, the text you type in might not appear in exactly the same way in the final URL. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, certainly not for anything we've done here so far. It's more just out of interest than anything else. I'm just going to quickly change the phrase I'm translating here to you're welcome. And I'm doing this because I've got then an apostrophe character, a bit of punctuation. This is more likely to affect punctuation characters than anything else in your query strings. Now, if I were to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then run this subroutine again, everything will still work, of course. So we'll still get the same process happening, copying the translation and then pasting that into the worksheet. So we'll see we get a different output this time in cell A4. But if we have a look back at the query string that we've generated, you'll see that what was an apostrophe in the text we type in becomes a percentage 27 code in the final URL. I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, but um, not every character you can type into this text box here is a legal character in a URL. Now, Google Chrome does a pretty good job of recognizing those illegal characters and translating them into the appropriate codes. But just in case you were interested or you wanted to sort of guarantee this or be a little bit more explicit about this, Excel does have a function that allows you to translate text into URL encoded text. So it's actually a worksheet function. I could type into cell B1 here equals encode URL and then refer to cell A1 and I'll get a similar, not identical, but a similar string represented here. So the important thing here is the percentage 27 for the apostrophe character. It also translates the space into a percentage 20, which actually Google Chrome represents with a plus symbol there instead. So if you wanted to be absolutely certain about this, you could use that worksheet function in your get statement, your get method. So rather than referring to range A1's text, we could pass range A1's text into the worksheet function dot encode URL and then refer to range A1's text in there instead. Okay, so the end result won't be any different. Let's just change the output cell to range A5 just to reassure ourselves that this is still working. And if we run the whole thing again, so it goes through the same process, of course, and there we go, we've copied it and hopefully then pasted it. We should see the same final output just using our explicitly URL encoded string. 
So there we go, there's a bit of the basics of using Google Translate via Selenium in Excel VBA. Hope that answers the original question. Um, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.